Jeremy, on the topic of data, I know that you are um, moderating a panel this afternoon on IBOR, and you know we've, we've got a series of investment managers on that panel, but also it's driven very heavily by SimCorp and Eagle, and actually all the big all the big names in in, in investment management solutions, uh, Charles River Development, Mises, DST are all talking about IBOR. So my question on IBOR is why now? Why has this suddenly become so prominent? I mean, I've been hearing about it for a long time. A lot of the, um, the, 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 the solution providers believe it already sits within the system, but why suddenly this resurgence? That, that's one question. The second question, is there a contrarian view? Is everybody pro IBOR, or is there an argument against? Uh, and I'm really interested to see that at the panel and to hear your thoughts about that. So I think, um, I think there's been an incremental demand for a certain type of service. Yes. That has resulted in what I consider the formalization of IBOR. So I agree, IBOR has always been there, yep. right? The goal for most firms was to meet the business demand uh, of providing them the data they needed at the time they needed it, right? And right. traditionally, other than the front office, nobody was really asking for information on what I'd consider near real time or on demand. Yes. You know, end of day was fine. Some shops still ran, you know, monthly and only closed their books once a month. And obviously the compression factor with you know, the accelerating settlement cycles is to move to at least a daily model. And everyone's kind of agreed that's at a minimum. What's really happened is I think the risk and the volatility of the markets mm -hmm. have started to force the issue about intraday events. And what do I really need to know and when do I need to know it? Now you can get into the whole debate around what is truly IBOR supposed to serve up and is there a clear business demand for it or has it really almost become a self-fulfilling sales process by the vendors and by the industry, right? Clearly what we've seen is that there's more and more demand to start to understand where you stand in the market at points in time, as opposed to only looking at it through the lens of where I was yesterday plus the trading activity of today. But I think there's a debate still to be had about the cost benefit of that. What's really driving, you know, if the cost was $50 million to answer that question, most firms would say, I won't ask the question. Right, depending on the size and the complexity of the firm. If I was a massive global insurance company, I'd probably say that's a reasonable question to answer with that price tag, right? But a firm that's used to spending five million or $20 million on a big implementation and you tell them to answer some really esoteric intraday questions, which may not be critical to the existence of the business other than during a highly volatile you know, um, 2009 set of events, right? Are you truly gonna build for that level of volatility uh, in order to have you know, that capacity in your system. So I think there's still a gap between the business demand and the IBOR functional model that has to sort of be resolved. But clearly the continuum is pointing us towards asking, the business is asking for more information on a more frequent basis throughout the trading cycle. And so that's driving you know, IBOR as a compelling solution for that.